this this rocket, the first time it launches on the exploration mission one, will have 10% more thrust than the Saturn V. And by the time that we get the the next one, the Mars Journey vehicle ready, it will have 20% more thrust. Sure. So these solid rocket motors are really designed after the shuttle solid rocket motors that we used for years and years. And those motors put out almost 3 million pounds of thrust. Well, we added another segment. that So these, these rocket motors are actually taller than what the, the shuttle mo rocket motors were. I did not realize that. And it that. puts out 3.5 million pounds of thrust now. And so together, 7 million pounds of thrust plus the 2 million pounds of thrust that you get out of the RS-25 liquid engines. And so in two minutes, these boosters have, have really accelerated us to the point to where this core can take us to orbit. Any hardware or anything with it? And uh, it, it does, we really take it seriously. You know, it does what it's supposed to do. And when they, NASA calls on it to go get it done, the crawler moves and it accomplishes what it's set out to do. Great. Hey, this is Randy Coppola from U.S. Launch Report. I'm sitting outside the MLS, our mobile launch support. Now, what exactly does this do? Well, and why is it outside? Well, let me explain. First of all, these many, many crews and all the tools that you hear are repurposing this structure, which was originally designed for the Constellation program to handle the massive SLS rocket. Why is it being done outside the VAB? Because, as they explained to us, it's much easier to work on it out here and it'll be moved inside in September of 2016. And then, once it's inside the VAB, they will start to stack the SLS rocket. This unit actually has holes in the bottom of it that the exhaust blows through after it's been brought out to the launch pad when it's ready to be launched. What comes underneath it is the crawler. The crawler will be capable of carrying the 180 million tons that this entire object weighs. So there's quite an undertaking, but this shows how much project, progress between both this inside the VAB, the boosters, and everything else we've seen here at NASA that's being made towards manned space flight. Well, this is Randy Coppola from U.S. Launch Report, and I have the distinct opportunity to speak to Chris Crumbly from uh, NASA. And can you tell me first a little about your uh, position here at NASA, sir? Sure. I'm one of four element managers on the Space Launch System, and I manage everything that has to do with the spacecraft and payload integration, which means the adapters, and also the evolution of the vehicle. Well, we had the, before the camera was set up, we had the opportunity to talk, so I really kind of had to have a head start on our viewers, and I would like to pass along some of the things that Chris and I have been speaking about. One of them is the, the size of the future SLSs. I, I had, uh, since it's Media Week here at Kennedy Space Center, I had the opportunity to see the, uh, the launcher and how big that was, and they didn't really explain that that is for a much larger version of this rocket. That's right, and we're building for the biggest version of the rocket that we can build, and that is 384 feet tall. Now, the Delta IV is the largest rocket in our stable right now, and we're talking about a vehicle of the first variant, not the, not the most powerful, but the first variant of this rocket, the SLS, will be 100 feet taller, and it will carry two and a half times more of the payload mass of that largest rocket. And a quick question about the VAB, because we were, we were just there, is will the VAB have to be modified to accommodate the largest iteration of this rocket? No, one of the things that we're really focused on on these programs, and these three programs, is affordability. And one of the things that we decided is the VAB is a very large building. So let's build with that capability of the VAB. And so we, we restricted the height of the rocket, of the overall, to the encapsulated weight of the size that we could fit into the VAB. So 384 feet tall, we'll be watching it sail just right out of the, the chute when it comes out of the VAB. One of the most interesting things about the SLS, the Space Launch System, is unlike the Saturn V, even though there's so much comparison to the Saturn V, it looks like the Saturn V, the Saturn V was a moon rocket. That was its primary purpose. This can be a moon rocket, a Mars rocket, an exploration to a asteroid rocket, or take a capsule to the ISS. Well, another thing that you didn't mention is that this vehicle can also be an exploration vehicle for scientific payloads. We are working with a, a spacecraft team now that wants to go to, to um, Europa. 
And this Europa mission with existing spacecraft, existing launch vehicles, would take seven years to get to Europa. This vehicle can put it there in two, in a direct mission. That's five years of accelerated science for that mission. So it's not just the volume, it's not just the mass, it's the speed that this vehicle can then put things into the solar system. Sir, we are working with a, a spacecraft team now that wants to go to, to um, Europa. And this Europa mission with existing spacecraft, existing launch vehicles, would take seven years to get to Europa. This vehicle can put it there in two, in a direct mission. That's five years of accelerated science for that mission. So it's not just the volume, it's not just the mass, it's the speed that this vehicle can then put. Dawn, the dawn of Orion, and a new era of American space exploration. 